Honestly, just find it so terrifying. A rape alarm. Oh my God, it's the real world. I had to make new friends. I had to put myself out there. And it's pretty perfect in that sense. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. If you are new here, hello. My name is Georgia and I've been living here in Singapore for five and a half years now. If you want to see more of me, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram or you can hit that red button below. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss out on a video. I quite like the bird noises in the background, so we're just going to work with it they're having a good time out there don't know why they just seem like they're extra loud today thought i would sit down with you guys today and have a real honest chat with you about why it is so hard <laughs> to leave singapore if you've been following my journey from the beginning myself and my husband only intended to be here for three years in singapore um, we then extended and extend it again and it's now been five and a half years and by the time we leave I think it will be six years so you're probably thinking why why is it that you stayed I'm gonna be sharing some of those things with you today about just why it is so difficult to leave Singapore um, on the flip side if you have been following um, yeah we're most likely going to be leaving next year so you know what at the start of this year we were saying oh it's gonna be our last year in Singapore I can't believe it's now October like I am actually so sad that this is how I ended up spending my last year in Singapore like I am absolutely gutted saying that I also just want to empathize with all of you who are struggling through this year I mean Let's be honest, I think all of us are struggling this year. Some of you guys have been DMing me saying this was your first year in Singapore and you came straight off the plane into quarantine and now you're living in this kind of strange limbo. Um, I know it's so difficult for everybody and I truly do empathise with all of your situations and I hope that it only gets better from now on, especially in Singapore. We seem to be handling it pretty well compared to the rest of the world. I am gutted, this is how the journey is ending, but at the same time I have to be super grateful for the incredible few years that I've had here. On the flip side to this video, if you guys are interested in hearing the reasons why foreigners may want to leave Singapore, or like, I guess my personal reasons for, for being ready to move on from Singapore, do let me know in the comments below and uh, I can film that video as well. Just before we get started, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes for creatives and curious people in general. Whether you want to branch out into graphic design, learn more about illustration and video editing, whichever creative avenue you can think of, there's literally a video for you there on Skillshare to learn from. I personally think it's incredible for creative self-development and I've been watching a class recently all about productivity, which I mean, I need all the productivity videos I can get at the moment, trust me. I particularly love this class by Thomas Frank, which is how to build habits that last when it comes to productivity. So if you guys wanna check out the video lessons and creative classes for yourselves, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description box will get a free month's trial to Skillshare Premium. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's talk about some reasons why it's so blooming easy to live in Singapore. I think number one for me has got to be the convenience. And when I compare life now here to the UK, because Singapore is so tiny, I think it's is it just a little bit bigger than London or around the same size as London, the whole of Singapore? It probably only takes just over an hour to get from one side of Singapore to the other. It's incredibly small. And for that reason, it's very easy to access any part of the island quickly because of the efficient MRT lines, that's the railway system, and the buses. Not to mention taxis are very much affordable in comparison to the UK. I think I used to pay, this is back in 2015, bear in mind, but I used to pay five pounds, that's around $10, for literally like a two minute cab ride from my train station to my home. Whereas in Singapore, I can go say 15, 20 minute taxi ride um, and it could cost me around $15, which is about seven pound 50 or eight pounds. So um, it's a lot easier to get around, a lot more affordable. And the prices of trains are absolutely astronomical in the UK. It's just, it's silly. This is my first time actually living in a city and it just means that everything is on your doorstep. You know, if you, if you want a coffee shop, a bar, an incredible restaurant, um, even if you want to go for a hike, um, everything is accessible in Singapore, which makes it very easy to live here. Another thing I love about 
um, being here is that it's very easy just to see my friends just at the drop of a hat because everyone is so close by. You can just call someone up and say, do you wanna go grab a coffee? Do you wanna get a drink tonight? And it's not a hassle, like it's just very easy compared to the UK where my friends are scattered all over the UK in different towns and cities now. Um, it takes a lot more arranging to have to see people. The safety is obviously a huge one and something I really worry about when I go back to the UK is safety. I honestly say for everyone that's just moved here, living in Singapore is like sometimes just like living in a bubble. It's like you're wrapped in bubble wrap. Um, you're not exposed to dangerous things anymore. Like I never feel like I'm in, in danger here. I can go run of an evening, go for a jog, I won't think twice about it or think twice about my safety or do I need to bring a rape alarm? Do I need to bring my keys? Do I need to hold my keys in my hands like this just in case something happens? All these worries that I used to have in the UK, I used to be very street savvy growing up in the UK, you just kind of have to be. Like as a woman, you wouldn't necessarily walk down the street alone at night without feeling uncomfortable or uneasy. Um, in Singapore, all of those things just went out the window and I don't think about it anymore. This is why I get worried about moving back to the UK because I feel like I'm so out of practice now. Like, I personally never really had, I've only had a couple of bad experiences in, in the UK in my life, but you're just a lot more aware of it. Um, and in Singapore, just doesn't, I just doesn't exist. Not to mention catcalling, I've never been catcalled in Singapore maybe only one time and it's pretty perfect in that sense i can't lie so I, I when you leave singapore it's like oh my god little things like having my phone in my pocket um on the london underground i have to remember like maybe put it in your bag or in your coat pocket or people are not as trustworthy um back home as they are in singapore and i love singapore for that reason it's incredible that singapore um lives this way because it's a you know, I feel like the rest of the world would love to feel as safe as we do in Singapore. Um, and maybe Singaporeans sometimes take that for granted. So it is very daunting, the thought of going back to the UK and kind of getting back to grips with the real world is how I see it. It's not living in like a safe little bubble anymore. This is a bit of a silly one, but in Singapore, I don't need to drive just because I told you public transport is so incredible and easily accessible. I have a huge phobia of driving. I drove for about a year or so, but I just hate driving. I have nightmares about driving. It just terrifies me and I hate that I'm going to have to learn to drive again and get used to driving again because um, yeah, back home, you just need a car. A car is so much more affordable than it ever would be in Singapore. Um, so getting a car is no problem, but to get Oh, you know around the country in the UK you really do need a car so I am really scared about facing my fears if any of you guys have driving anxiety as well please do comment below and let me know if we're all in the same boat here but I honestly just find it so terrifying and that even adds to the like oh my god it's the real world everything's dangerous fear that I have about leaving Singapore I don't like driving <laughs> as you guys have been following me on my journey here. I'm sure you've realized that I've gone from absolutely loving the weather. You know, if you come from the UK where it's miserable most of the year to Singapore where it's pretty much sunshine every day, it's uh, a foreigner's dream. I do have seasonal affective disorder. So when I was in the UK, I was incredibly depressed every time winter and autumn kind of rolled around. That lasts a good few months and I empathise with you, those of you maybe watching so much that um, suffer with the same thing. Uh, yeah, seasonal disorder is real and um, lack of sunlight, lack of vitamin D really does take its toll. I don't think it's quite normal either. Um, but despite it being incredibly hot and humid, I, ha I do wake up feeling grateful every single day that I, I have that heat outside because I get cold even with the aircon on, I'm very silly. Um, but just stepping outside, it's like a warm hug and I absolutely love it and I love the brightness, like when it's blue skies, it's just beautiful and I thank my lucky stars every day that I'm here that I still get to live in a hot climate. It's all I ever dreamed of when I was younger because I was just so constantly freezing 
and I have to be honest leaving this is going to be very very difficult for me it's going to be a struggle I just wish Singapore was like a nice 25 degrees like that would be absolutely perfect I don't I don't mind the humidity so much I don't really sweat too much um, but it's just that it's like 33 degrees and that's it's just a bit too hot so if only Singapore was a nice cool 25 degrees I think it would be absolutely perfect let me know down below guys I'm sure I already know what most of you will say if you are locals but do you love the warm weather or would you honestly rather live long term in a in a cooler climate I feel like Singaporeans love love uh, winter for like a week like they go to Japan they're like yeah I love winter but I don't think you'd want to put up with that all year round but maybe you would comment below let me know Let's talk about travel because honestly I think this is one of the most appealing aspects of moving to Singapore for foreigners and expats is the travel that comes along with it. Most of us migrate over here, we're not planning on being here long long term or for the rest of our lives so we know that it's a great little spot to be in Singapore and it's the perfect hub for traveling around Asia and ticking off those I guess bucket list um, countries. I am so thankful for the experiences um, we've managed to have traveling all around Asia for these past five years it has been absolutely incredible and never in my wildest dreams did I think that I'd be able to visit these places like in my early 20s I would have said no I'm probably never going to get to that side of the world um, I just didn't think it was going to happen and it did and it's been amazing it's another reason I'm so sad to leave is that this year we were going to tick off those last few places that have been on the dream list and it doesn't look like it's going to be happening um, which means we'll just have to come back another reason why it's so hard for me to leave singapore is that i feel like a lot of my personal growth has taken place here in singapore over the past five years so i moved here when i was 25 no i moved here when i was 24 probably learned the most while i've been out here about myself yeah, I just feel like my mind has kind of expanded. It's been incredible for personal development in the sense that I was so incredibly shy when I first moved here. I was so shy, I didn't want to talk to anyone. And I feel like moving to Singapore has completely changed my personality in the sense that I just had to get on with it. I had to make new friends. I had to put myself out there. Doing YouTube and having you guys follow me along as well has helped my confidence tremendously and I'm sure if you go back and watch old videos of mine you will see the difference for yourself yeah it's been an incredible learning experience and it's hard to uproot your life and start again I've made such incredible friends here I've met some really great people and um, I think when you move anywhere and you know that it's not going to be necessarily a long-term thing it's always going to be so hard to kind of uproot your life and start all over again so um that's another reason it's very hard to leave here i do think though if you feel yourself getting restless or you feel like everything's becoming a bit more stagnant in your life again then it may be decide that you're ready for something new which is definitely how i'm feeling um, and I feel like I've had this niggling feeling for quite a while now and that um, I'm ready for a new adventure and to, um, and to move on. But that doesn't make it any easier to leave uh, the life that, that we've created here. All right, guys, so I think that's pretty much my list of reasons why I'm personally struggling to leave Singapore. But like I said, if you would like to hear the flip side of um, the story and... Um, why I am ready to leave Singapore, then do let me know in the comments below and I will film that as a follow-up video if you, if you wanna hear. Please do be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. It does really help me out a lot and it helps my videos be seen by other people, so I really would um, appreciate the support. A big thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to click the Skillshare link below down in the description for your free month subscription and uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys.